In the cold north lies a kingdom full of honor and bravery, the house of the direwolf. This is one of the most interesting places in the entire Game of Thrones universe. The Starks are always ready for the winter that is coming, but they did not expect the dragon fire that quickly consumed Westeros. What happens when the leader of this legendary family kneels before Aegon Targaryen, becoming forever the king who knelt? In the past few weeks, we began a series of videos explaining Aegon's conquest in Westeros. We looked at how with their dragons they destroyed entire kingdoms in a blink of an eye, and now it's the North's turn to experience the warmth of the House of the Dragon. Today we are going to talk about the story of Torn Stark, the last king in the North. The king who knelt during the conquest of Aegon. And for more videos from the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire as well as Game of Thrones, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome. To the Three-Eyed Raven. This story begins in the north in the Kingdom of Winterfell, where Torrhen Stark was located. Not much is known about this king, but what we do know is he was loved and respected by the northerners. Also he was one of the descendants of the First Men, the same ones who came to Westeros and fought with the Children of the Forest. Torrhen began to receive news of Aegon's conquest throughout Westeros. His men and spies told him stories about how the dragon fire had melted Heron Hall, how the Field of Fire destroyed the Lannister men, and how entire families had been wiped out. Torrhen knew that this war could represent the extinction of the Starks in the north, so he gathered 30,000 men and began to march to the shores of the Trident. Aegon had continued his conquest through Westeros, when he heard that the Starks were preparing for war, and decided to ride his dragon with his two queens to face the Northerners. Torrhen Stark was determined to fight, but he really did not know what to do. He received different advice where some told him to surrender, while others claimed that the bravery of the Northerners would help him win the battle. The king's illegitimate brother named Bran Snow, asked Torrhen to let him lead a group of men, to slay the dragons in their sleep. But King Stark had a better idea. He sent Brandon Snow to the other side of the Trident, not to kill, but to negotiate. Accompanied by three maesters, Brandon carried messages between the two leaders throughout the night. Aegon listened carefully to the words of Brandon Snow and the maesters, and offered them a truce. After several hours of conversations, they reached an agreement. It was then when King Torin, the sword in the north, decided to kneel in front of King Aegon. The book Fire and Blood says the following about that event. There, on the south shore he knelt, laid the ancient crown of the kings of Winterfell at Aegon's feet and swore allegiance to him, and stood as Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, no longer as king. From that day to this day, Torrhen Stark is known as the king who kneeled. No northerner lost his life, nor did his swords become part of the Iron Throne. The Starks had surrendered without a fight and joined the dragon. But why did this happen? What exactly happened in the conversation between the maesters, Bran and Aegon? What drove Torrhen Stark to kneel without a fight? This is certainly uncharacteristic of northerners, but we must understand two things, the first is the king knew this was a losing battle. Aegon had overcome armies twice the size of the northerners, and they had no definitive answer to the dragons. On the other hand, Aegon was not interested in destroying Winterfell. Aegon wished to unify the Seven Kingdoms because the extinction of humanity was approaching. Let us remember that what drove Aegon to conquer Westeros was not only ambition, but a dream in which he saw the destruction of mankind. But that a savior would arise, the prince that was promised, who would unify the kingdoms and fight against death itself. So the fact that Aegon was benevolent and accepted the surrender is consistent with his goals. On the other hand, the Starks had also previously fought the White Walkers, so they had a common enemy. I think Torn was wise and knew the North was in great danger, and if he knelt no one would lose their lives. 
perhaps he saw that Aegon was a person of honor and would keep his promises. Although of course, we cannot rule out that there was a much deeper and more mystical conversation between them, about what might happen in the future. What is clear is that in the years that followed, Winterfell and the North prospered under the reign of House Stark, and the loyalty between Aegon and his descendants was unwavering. The union of these two great houses served as a reminder of the power of diplomacy and wisdom. As the years passed, the legend of the king who kneeled became a source of pride and wisdom for the North. The young men learned that courage is not only found in battle, but also in the ability to put the welfare of their people above personal pride. Something that other kings and knights of Westeros never learned, and ended up paying with their lives. Though there were those who murmured that Torin had been weak by kneeling, most understood that his sacrifice had prevented unnecessary slaughter, and had allowed the North to continue to prosper. The relationship between houses Stark and Targaryen remained strong and stable. An unbreakable alliance forged by mutual respect and admiration. Until the time of Robert's rebellion. Rhaegar Targaryen and his forbidden relationship with Lyanna Stark ended up destroying this peace that existed in the kingdom, although there is a high probability that Rhaegar also acted under the idea of the prophecy of the prince that was promised. Which is rather ironic, since Aegon the Conqueror united the kingdoms based on this prophecy, and Rhaegar caused their division based on the same idea. But this is a topic we'll talk about in its own video. Hundreds of years later, a new king in the north had to kneel before a Targaryen conquering Westeros. This time it was Jon Snow who knelt before Daenerys Targaryen, in order to fight off the approaching threat. We are going to destroy the Night King and his army. We'll do it together. You have my word. Thank you, darling. Here's the last person who called me that. Not about my queen. Those who swore allegiance to you. They'll all come to see you for what you are. <laughs> this means that history once again repeated itself. But this time there is something different. The Starks did not surrender Winterfell, and Sansa stayed as queen in the north. This change in dynamics could propitiate another war, and another rise of another dragon that brings the north to its knees again. The relationship between the Starks and the Targaryens has always been one of cooperation in the face of the end of mankind, and Jon Snow is the living example of this, born of ice and fire, the last Targaryen. But tell me what are your thoughts on the story about the king who kneeled, why do you think he surrendered without a fight? In the description of this video, we'll leave the other parts of the series about the conquest of Aegon, and for more videos from the universe of the Song of Ice and Fire, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you liked this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Three-Eyed Raven